Four Kitchens, is, you know, is the creator. Is that fair to say of Emulsify? Um, and uh, I want I want you to be able to tell tell our audience all about it. So here's here's the softball question: What is Emulsify? Well, I'm completely caught unawares by this question, but I will try and answer it as best I can. Um, no, so Emulsify really is the, like if you have a Venn diagram of Drupal and Storybook, Emulsify sits in the middle of that. Um, Emulsify is a, a free and open source tool for like for us to be able to build these um, component libraries and design systems. Um, and we wanna make sure that like teams have clear like users and uh, sorry, clear guidelines and like requirements for teams. We basically want to make sure that everybody has all the things that they need, like checking accessibility. Um, you know, sometimes clients will request, like they don't like gendered terminology. So we add an add on into storybook so that it like reviews all of the copy that gets put into it um, to like help, you know, with those sorts of things. So Emulsify is there for creating these design systems. Um, both as component libraries, like we've been talking about, but also a little getting a little bit larger and looking at it more holistically, like in terms of like, we want to have our philosophies for how the design system was made. We want to talk about like the, like maybe the documentation on the coding, like why we've made choices that we've made, um, marketing decisions that have been made uh, for certain components. All right. So I almost hate to ask this question because I feel like I'm a little bit, overwhelmed as it is um but where does emulsify fit in like can you use storybook with drupal without emulsify does emulsify just make the process easier like what's the relationship between the three if you can like kind of you know draw me a diagram in my head to help explain that all right well let me fire up fig jam and i'll make you a diagram so here's uh, here's how it works. So you can use Storybook independently of Emulsify with Drupal. You can go in and do the things that you need to do. But some of the things that you need to do are going to be to create those uh, twig connector components um, that say, like, use this thing over here. Like, I this is the, was it, the Drupal summary view display um, and connect it up to the cards. Whereas with Emulsify, we have a lot of that pre-written. So most especially menus. We talked earlier about how menus are complicated. We have like a component that will consume Drupal's menu stuff and do that so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, whenever it comes to JavaScript within Drupal, um, writing JavaScript in Storybook, you don't have access to the like the Drupalisms and firing um, the JavaScript off. And so mm -hmm. what Emulsify does is we have like this Drupal wrapper that we wrap around all the JavaScript for like the tabs and accordions and what have you, bells and whistles, so that whenever you're looking at it in Storybook or the code that you write in, for Storybook is the code that you'll write for Drupal. Whereas if you just rolled your own with storybook, you would either have to recreate that or take that into account and then write like two different versions, depending on, on what you'd like to have with your workflow. Um, I'm also like, just makes it Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, no, finish your thought, then I'll, I'll jump in. Uh, I was just going to say, I'm also, it makes it really easy to work with Drupal um, in this way because of all of these affordances, like these problems that are easy to solve, but time consuming to solve. Like the menu problem, like, I mean, a smart person can get it done in a couple of days, but wouldn't you rather work on something else for a couple of days that's maybe more challenging? So or, I think or not if you're watching the video, probably just saw the light bulb on over my head up here somewhere. So I'm going to use an analogy and just tell me if I'm right on this. Um, sure. It sounds like Emulsify is to integration between Drupal and Storybook the same way is that like the core um, Drupal recommended project template makes it easier to use Composer with Drupal core, right? Because you can start a new composer project and include Drupal core recommended, but then you'd have to figure out the scaffolding stuff on your own mm -hmm. and you'd have to add composer installers on your own and you could do it, but it would take more time. So it sounds like the same thing's happening with storybook and Drupal and emulsify is just making the connections for you. And so allowing you to get to work on the stuff you want to be working on a little bit faster. That is very apt. Uh, and accurate. That is exactly the purpose of it is to give you a leg up in your work and to try to be not 
try to bring as few opinions as possible. So one of the things we've talked a lot about components, uh, what we haven't talked about is like, are those components like required? How do you adapt and use them? Um, we have Emulsify set up so that you can actually um, either, you can install all of the default components that we have, which kind of give you a, a leg up and getting things done. Um, you can install some of them or you can install none of them and do your own system. Like for instance, we use the like, uh, we use atomic design for like naming folders. Like we like atoms and molecules and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Whereas like some other people, they might want like design tokens and just components um, and then have like subfolders within that. Um, either of those approaches or any approach that you would want to take is completely valid with emuls with emulsify so um so we don't have like you locked into a certain pattern or methodology so nick and john i'm pretty sure i'm not going to guess host anymore because i'm not sure anything i've said is or anything i could say is going to be more accurate than what i just said so i think i've hit my peak and i'm just gonna that's, that's drop fine the mic so, and run away so, i mean i, is, I always feel it? like I always feel like uh, it's good good to have um, all perspectives, and yours yours is just just another another perspective. So I, I think we'll I think we'll have you back. I, I have a question, and you may have you may have alluded to this, you may have answered it, and I may have missed it. So I apologize if you already answered. Emulsify sits between Storybook and Drupal. Is Emulsify a storybook add-on, a Drupal module, or just a separate standalone like thing that lives in between? Or, or is it a is it a Drupal theme? I mean, I think my question is: is it a Drupal module? Is it a yeah, Drupal I guess, theme? I guess it could be a theme too. Well, it is. Um, it is a combination of things. It uh, it includes Storybook as a dependency, so that means that Emulsify is kind of like a wrapper around Storybook. So it is not a Storybook add-on. It is, it encompasses it and uses it. So it is Storybook Plus. Huh. Okay. Okay. So it's like so, a flavor of Storybook. But, well, it's no, because it's, <laughs> it's like building on top of it, all of these connections to Drupal, like Storybook, <laughs> Storybook doesn't care about Drupal. Storybook just cares about making components and presenting sure. components. Um, and Emulsify cares about Drupal and it cares about WordPress and it cares about wherever these components are going to be used. So Storybook cares about the components. Emulsify cares about the system. We said this um, is a clean sure. podcast. So, WordPress. Yeah. Sorry. Mm, mm -hmm. I'm so sorry. You can bleep it. Um, okay. So, and then uh, the question of whether or not Emulsify is a theme, it is also a theme. Like, that's how it gets used. In order for the... Um, uh, the twig files that that bring in the Drupal data, we create an Emulsify theme, and that's how we connect it up. Uh, and so Emulsify is in fact a theme, but I don't I don't like to lead with and start talking about it as if it were a theme, because I think that that does it an injustice on what it's supposed to be. Because with Storybook, you can have a standalone Storybook instance, like you can you know, just have it off to its side where you've got the theme inside of your site, but then you also are generating this, this storybook, yeah. um, like mm -hmm. for review for other people. And like, you can do a lot of different things with it. Um, so, so it is a theme, but I don't like frame it as such. Sorry. I'm laughing because on the video, you can see Mike's brain, like slowly leaking out of his ear. And, um, it's just, you know, his facial expressions are priceless. You know, I can you send like him? I, oh. I felt like I had a good handle on things. I did. I was feeling I had very high confidence. And then like 90 seconds ago, it just started just waning, that waning away. So I mean, I, I get it, right? So it's it you're you're taking you're you're basically it's a big like space said, theme. Yeah, it's a, the glue between storybook and Drupal. It's basically wrapping storybook, right? To say like, hey, here's storybook. And then it's it's providing the, the, the integration or the connection point to Drupal through a theme that you're using, all yeah. of which is highly customizable. I just really yes. want Randy to tell me it's a base thing. And that's it. <laughs> but I feel like you don't want to say that. Well, I... I mean, uh, tell me what you mean by base theme, like something like Stark or like well, just uh, no, something more, where you would like... start your theme. Like, OK, I'll give you an example, yeah. like boot, Bootstrap Barrio. That's okay. or, a base or Omega theme. or Zen. Right. 
you know, it okay. has some then, tools that integrate with, you know, with a CSS framework. Um, so I'm imagining, and maybe it's wrong, that Emulsify is a base theme that has all of those links back to Storybook already pre-made for me. Yes and no. So yes, in that like it is good for building. Um, no, in that it is for building from scratch. Um, you know, we provide the framework. We we like you don't boot up with Emulsify as a theme and have a site that looks like Bootstrap or Foundation or Material or whatever like Emulsify thing that we yeah. have. Um, it shows up. It's more. Um, Ah, the only example I can think of is from the, the CMS that shall not be named, but, um, but basically just letting you like have all the connectors and, you know, the HTML written and allowing you to go in and define how those things get used. So, so you, let, me, let me help. Let me, let me, let me help with, with Mike's question a little bit here, uh, layer, layer on top of it, if you will, cause that's sure. a common theme right now. So <laughs> common workflow for folks using emulsify are they editing the emulsify theme or are they creating their own theme and pulling the emulsify theme in as a as a starting point the they are editing the emulsify theme okay so yes so what you could in theory one thing that you could do is you could take emulsify and create it and make it stand alone so that you have front-end engineers and designers working on the components mm -hmm. and they don't even have to be aware of drupal uh, and then you can have the site builders in Drupal who say like, okay, I am including this theme as like a, a Git submodule or like however you want to pull it from the Emulsify repo into your Drupal instance. And then okay. you can you can do it that way. It is a theme, but you can have it like separate to allow other teams to work on it. And if you did that approach, that then would allow you because it would be separate and outside of your like Drupal repository, your Drupal Git repository, you would then be able to use it for like a React site for a, you know, other CMS site, et cetera. So, so it's a, so it truly is a starting point. You're not, you're not mm -hmm. installing Emulsify with Composer and then updating it later on. You're just taking point in time yes. grabbing that code base making your own theme from it. Mm -hmm. And then if there's any features that you need to add, they get added later. You have to manually do that. You're, you're not, it's not a base theme. It's not a theme. It's basically, Hey, here's a point in time integration between Drupal and storybook, take it, start there, but it's a custom theme yourself that you're, yes. you're starting when you start the project. Yes. And I'm sorry that if I haven't sense. given that. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry no, if no, I've that, that, uh, no, had that, a hard time communicating unique. that. Okay. No, no, that, that's kind of unique. There's not really, a space in Drupal terminology for that, but but it also really, I've only seen it really happen with Pattern Lab and with Storybook because they're tightly coupled to the theme that they're used in. There, it's not a base theme because if you did a base theme off of it, anything in the sub theme wouldn't show up in Storybook. Yeah, would kind of defeat the purpose. Um, but like you said, there's a lot of steps you have to do to make Storybook work with with Drupal. So if you have a starting point, that's perfect. So that makes okay. sense now. 